Good evening, everyone. You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your heavenly Father. For he makes his sun rise on the bad and the good, and causes rain to fall on the just and the unjust. Matthew 5 verses 43 to 45 Nowhere in the Old Testament does it say that we should hate our enemies. Note that Jesus did not say, it has been written. Instead, he says, you have heard that it was said. So, who said this? Some traditions among the scribes and the Pharisees held this erroneous belief. Because some held that position, Jesus addressed it. In this passage and in many others, Jesus calls us to a new depth of love that many thought impossible. In fact, even Jesus himself acknowledged the height of his teaching when, at the conclusion of this passage, he says, So be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. Too often in life we settle for everything other than perfection. And though we may never achieve that level of holiness in this life, it must be our constant goal. In regard to our enemies, perfect love for them must become our daily mission. So, who is your enemy? Though Jesus does not define this for us, we should consider it to be anyone with whom there is some form of tension or discord. Perhaps there is someone who hates or dislikes you and speaks ill of you or treats you poorly. Or perhaps there is someone whom you dislike and find yourself angry at or even judgmental toward. So begin by trying to identify anyone with whom you have a lack of perfect affection. In truth, there might be many more people on that list than on the list of those you love. Once you identify those who fall into the category of enemy to one extent or another, consider whether you love them. One church father says that we love our enemy when we are not sorrowful at his success or joyful in his fall. This is a very helpful de definition to consider. Ultimately, this is the definition of envy. If someone whom you dislike succeeds in something praiseworthy, how do you react interiorly? If there is an immediate visceral reaction, or if you have find yourself trying to figure out why they should be congratulated, then you might struggle with this sin. Or consider what you think, say or feel if you hear that someone you dislike has some problem, gets into some trouble, or encounters some misfortune. The ideal response is empathy and a desire for their well-being. If this is not the response within you, then pay attention to that. Reflect today upon those with whom you struggle to love to perfection. Perhaps that list is long. Start with those you encounter most often or those to whom you have a strong negative reaction. As you call them to mind, pray for them, for their good and for God's blessing upon them. Try to see some goodness in them. Try to thank God for them. And try to remove any disordered feelings or thoughts you might have about them. This is the first step 
in your mission to fulfill Jesus' new command of love. Pagmamahal na walang kondisyon. Pagmamahal na walang pasubali. Ito'y isang radikal na pananaw tungkol sa pagmamahal. Mga kapatid, sa pangpitong linggo ng karaniwang panahon, hinihimok po tayo na ating Panginoon kung paano po tayo makikipagkapwa. Paano po natin Mahalin ang ating mga kaibigan, ating mga kaway, ang mga taong sumasalaman sa atin. At tignan po natin ang proseso ang ating pagkipagkapwa sa kanila, ang itinugnayan sa kanila. Ayon po sa interpretasyon ng batas ng mga sagita, sa lumang tipan, ipin sa ipin, mata sa mata, kung ano ang pagkahawotang siya din ang kabayaran. Ito po ay sanhi na kung saan ang siklo ng violensya ay hindi nagtatapos. Pagkos dinudugtungan lalong imigting at lalong nanggagalaiti ang bawat isa. Kalimit na din po ito yung pakikitungan natin sa ating kapwa. Kung meron pong nagkakasala sa atin, gusto po natin gumante. Gusto po natin makiisa. Gusto po natin kahit pa paano'y malamangan ang mga taong may atraso po sa akin. Kaya nga po, mata sa mata, ipin sa ipin, buhay sa buhay. Subalit so, po ang pamamaraan na ating Panginoong Diyos ay sumasalungan sa interpretasyong ito. Ang batayan ng ating paghihigante ay ang batayan ng pagmamahal. Malasakit, pag-iintindi, pag-ibig na walang kondisyon at walang pasabali. Kaya nga po, napakahirap pong matanggap. Napakahirap pong maarok kung anong klaseng pagmamahal na nais natin maipadama, maibigay, maipamalas sa iba dahil nga po ang pamamaraan ng ating Pernod Diyos ay napakaradikal, napakahilap, hindi po basta-bastang masundan. Ika. Kaya nga po sa pangalawang pagbasa, hinihimog po tayo ni Pablo na mahalin ang lahat, mahalin ang bawat isa dahil ka nga po eh, ang bawat isa ay templo ng banal na Espiritu. 